GDP. We have always come across the word GDP in newspaper. I know many must be knowing it, but for those who don't, the value of all the goods and services produced within a year in a country is called GDP. Not only this, if a company of USA comes to India to manufacture something, then it will be counted in the GDP of India. That's why we focus so much on Make in India campaign. Now, the main question: Why we need to calculate GDP? Why people are putting so much of efforts on it? If I explain you in simple terms, if the GDP is going up every year, that means the production is more. in the country that indicates the economy is doing great but if the gdp is falling every year that means lesser goods and services are being produced in the country so the production is low selling is also low as a result business will earn less which will indeed reduce the purchasing power of people and vice versa so here comes the question of what we add in gdp and what not assume i want to eat an omelet so i go and buy egg the price of that egg will be added to gdp but if a baker buys that egg to make or to sell it further in that case the price of egg will not be counted rather the price of the final product that's the cake will be added in the gdp investment is also counted in gdp which has always been a risky and complicated process and deciding where to invest to get maximum profit is more difficult and add-ons are the unexpected thing just like corona due to which the market suddenly changed few companies were closed while few sustained and had a great growth gdp grows in two cases the first one is the real gdp it is a way of measuring a nation's output in terms of the value of its goods and services its investment government spending and export with the prices of the base year while second is the nominal gdp it is a way of measuring the value of all the goods and services produced by an economy at a current market price in a financial year now some interesting facts the gdp of uk and india is almost same but due to population uk's gdp is considered better due to the huge difference in gdp per capita the second one india has five time registered negative gdp the reason is the massive 2021 that gdp fell by a record 7.3% due to lockdown though gdp is always said to be the indicator of economic health of the nation is it really india is rich in resources yet it is not counted in the top manufacturing or service sector which is affecting the gdp why our country's gdp is down let's discuss some reasons behind this there are various reasons why india's gdp is not growing over the year the first reason is manufacturing and service sector the second is urbanizing rural population and the third is fiscal deficit these are few points our government need to focus to spike up the gdp graph Now let's look at these reasons one by one. Manufacturing and service sector. India stands out from other emerging economies because its growth has been led by the service sector. Share of the service sector accounted for 54% of the total gross value added in financial year 21. India service sector gross value added increased at a CAGR of 11.43% to rupees 101.47 trillion in financial year 20 from rupees 68.81 trillion in financial year 16 between financial year 16 and financial year 20 real estate financial and professional service augmented at a CAGR of 11.68% while trade hotels transport communication services related to broadcasting rose at a CAGR of 10.98% also india's it business services market is projected to reach 19.93 billion dollar by 2025 that's a great news but despite of such nice manufacturing and service sector india is still lagging behind in areas like tourism we know india is six times bigger than thailand and has so much diversity in culture and a rich history but it gets just one third of the number of tourists it is a matter of concern as well as an opportunity for the government that is upliftment of this sector will help to meet the huge demand 
We should not forget that India is the world's third largest renewable energy producer with 38% of energy capacity installed in the year 2020. With this renewable resource, there will be a rise in productivity but due to the lack of knowledge and innovation, we are not reaching the expected goal. Hmm. I feel the need to urbanize the rural population and focusing on unorganized sectors is extremely needed. You know, according to the World Bank's collection on development indicators, India has 65% of rural population. This is a very large hidden source of our country. In Punjab, farmers are using drones for spreading fertilizers on their farms, whereas in West Bengal, it is still limited to the technologies used back in old times, though they are the largest rice producer in the country. Hence, I think that proper guidance and education is required for the betterment of their lifestyle as well for the country. Government should conduct workshops on various technologies on agro-sectors to produce in large scale. There are numerous unskilled labors found in the rural areas. Government can motivate them to work for various sectors which will lead to produce more output in less time. One of the biggest hurdles in boosting GDP is the high government spending which exceeds the income. India has seen a physical deficit for a long period of time and at present has a deficit of 9.5, a soaring number which needs to brought down within 3%. Since India has a service-based economy and if the manufacturing sector is boosted, then the problem of physical deficit can be resolved gradually. Now, putting it all together, we can conclude the absolute growth in real GDP over financial year 20 would be a marginal 1.3%. Nominal GDP is estimated to grow at 17.6% compared to a fall of 3% in financial year 21. It means the government will have the benefit of a higher denominator as the annual physical deficit is looked at with respect to nominal GDP. Manufacturing is likely to expand at 12.5% while construction may rise to 10.7%. Trade, hotel, transport and communication, despite showing a high at 11.9% this year, have still not made up for output lost since financial year 20. Studies have also shown that Indian cities are likely to contribute to 70% of India's GDP by 2030. All of these findings are reflected in the exponential rate of urbanization that the country is undergoing. Underground economy activity negatively affects economic growth and reduces tax revenues for all levels of government, putting pressure on the government's ability to provide the services and benefits. Countries that are open to international trade tend to grow faster, innovate, improve productivity and provide higher income and more opportunities to their people. Foreign trade has played an important role in India's economic growth in the past two decades.